Councillor Nichols. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Wandsworth is determined to be at the cutting edge of the housing policy in the UK and our response to government's consultation paper on social housing reform underlines this. However, it is, virtually, it is vitally important that alongside reviewing tenure reform, the standard of our housing stock and improving tenant involvement, we do not lose sight of our broader mission to encourage home ownership and to help the young adult population onto the housing ladder. Assisting first-time buyers onto the property ladder, ladder is not a secondary activity. It presents a very significant challenge when considering the average first-time buyer deposit in London is now 86,000. That's 66% higher than us at the height of the property boom in 2007. The number of first-time buyers have reduced from 800,000 in 2007 to 200,000 in 2010, a quarter of what they were. In the meantime, private rents have increased, therefore decreasing opportunities to save for a deposit. It should be noted that if we, we can help stimulate first-time buyer market by our efforts, in turn, the local economy will benefit. For every home built, we estimate that 1.5 jobs are created directly, with double that in the chain supply. It is notable that the Mayor is on target to deliver 20,000 low-cost homes to buy under his First Steps initiative, and we've played our part in this, I'm pleased to say that over the last three years, we have enabled the development of 790 units of intermediate housing for low- and middle-income households. The average income of, a purch of purchasing of the household was 35,000. We have assisted 28 council tenants under our house purchase grant scheme and this will be repeated this year. If registered social landlords can be persuaded to be just as proactive in encouraging such moves, both sides win. The benefit to us is that we gain a unit to let and the, ha and the household get an opportunity to purchase. However, as the problem of getting onto the ladder increases, our responses must adapt and change, particularly if we are to retain uh, the skilled middle management vital to our local area, for example, doctors, nurses and teachers, and help long-term residents stay close to family and social networks. The shared ownership sector still only makes up to 1 to 2 percent of the total housing stock, so whilst a benefit, it is only part of the solution. The question is, how do we progress? Oh, sorry, progress. Um, I welcome uh, Grant Shap's plans to increase right to buy discounts to stimulate sales. I also welcome the opportunity that this will give us the capital receipts not just to replace rented stock but to identify capacity to support a first time buyer deposit scheme. Um, and the reason for this is quite obvious. Um, this, it's simple to understand. The, the increased choice as to where you, you can buy where you want to. The council have a stake and they can reclaim and be recycled when the purchaser comes to sell. And limited resources go further in that rather than building one intermediate home, we might be able to offer a number of deposits in its place. We care about helping our residents finding housing solutions that work for them, whether it is buying their own property, living in a shared, shared accommodation home, or in social housing sector. We want to support them. This is why I support our response to the government's consultation on social housing reform. Thank you, Councillor Nicholas. Councillor Carpenter. 
to Madam Mayor, the fact that the Leader of the Council is not here to listen to the debate speaks volumes about how seriously Wandsworth Council takes housing. Oh. Madam Mayor, when I last spoke... No, no, it's, it's, a, it's a disgrace. Uh, when I last spoke on housing at the July meeting of the Council, I concentrated on the provision of affordable family housing for rent in both the social and the private sectors. Madam Mayor. Today... Could, could, could I formally ask that um, Councillor Carpenter withdraw what, another one who's outrageous What point of order, Councillor McCausland, what point of order are you raising, please? I haven't a clue. Right. Councillor Carpenter, continue, please. Thank you. Um, today, I want to deal with some of the financial factors which constrain the supply of affordable housing in Wandsworth. Can I first say that there is much that is good about Wandsworth's social housing provision? The basic problem is that having sold off half of its estate over the past 30 years, there simply isn't enough supply of social housing to meet the underlying demand. Initiatives such as Hidden Homes and the proposed deposit scheme barely scratch the surface of the problem. I've drafted a paper for the Housing OSC looking at the implementation of the deposit scheme. And this shows that to finance only 100 deposits a year, a fund building up to some £12.5 million will be required, a significant imposition on the Council's financial resources. The Coalition Government has announced plans to revive the right to buy scheme, but this time replacing each unit sold with new build. Were the government to be successful in restoring sales to the level of 100,000 per annum reached in the heyday of right to buy, this would imply new government investment in housing of over 10 billion pounds per annum. This is roughly twice the level achieved by the previous Labour government, a level of investment in housing which has been more than halved by the incoming coalition government. This level of investment is simply not credible from a government whose overriding priority is to decrease, not increase, the level of government debt. When I see Grant Shapps talking about housing, I'm reminded of a 1970s television sketch about the amazing Misto and Janet. The amazing Misto, in full magician's garb, and with more than a passing resemblance to Grant, held out a top hat while his glamorous assistant Janet, not Wendy, uh, <laughs> pulled not rabbits, but tower blocks of council housing from it. It was a cruel deception then, and it is a cruel deception now. The government has come up with new schemes like affordable rent and limited tenure in an effort to reduce the subsidy to social housing and increase the nobility of social housing tenants but our own Director of Finance has expressed reservations about the cost of implemented limited tenure, and international research has indicated that the costs can outweigh the benefits. Increasing social rents combined with decreases in housing subsidy, far from reducing costs, is likely to increase homelessness, and the costs of addressing homelessness are far higher than the cost savings made by increasing rents. Today, we have heard about lots of well-intentioned initiatives to improve the supply of housing in Wandsworth, both social and private. But the fact of the matter is that without a very significant amount of money, all these will come to very little. Building 1,000 new family homes in Wandsworth will cost around a quarter of a billion pounds, and we need 10,000 to clear the shortage of supply. When I was at Sussex University in the 1960s, I attended a lecture by Enoch Powell, a doyen of the Tory right, not unlike uh, Liam Fox in our own day. He also came to a sticky end, mired in a river Tiber flow, foaming with blood. Anyway, Mr Powell was waxing lyrical about the Tories' radical programmes when a, a voice from the back of the hall called out, how will you pay for this revolutionary programme? Mr Powell had no answer, nor, I fear, had the ones with Tories. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I beg to move.
Yes, I've heard. I'm taking advice from the chief exec. You have to move the adjournment now if you're going to do that, Councillor Heaster. I didn't catch up, Mr. You've got is he going to move Are you going to move the adjournment? I am. May, I take, may we take that now, Mr. Mayor? That seems appropriate. Yes. Mr. Mayor, I wish to move the adjournment of the Council in view of the ungently and uh, comments made by Councillor Carpenter at the beginning of his speech. Mr. Mayor, we always have a bit of fun in this Council chamber, otherwise we probably wouldn't be here and spend the hours that we do. But there is no need to be rude to a member who is not absent, to def who is not present, and who cannot defend himself. Clearly, to actually make an attack like that on the leader of the council, who isn't present in the council chamber, is not fair at all. Now, if Councillor Carpenter had been prepared to accept uh, a withdrawal of those comments, I could understand, and that's fine. He decided not to. Mr Mayor, I do not believe that is the conduct that any of us wants to have. We can all make brash statements from time to time and we all begrudgingly give an apology or whatever it might be. But you know, when you found out to be so undiplomatic and to be so outrageously rude to a respected colleague, it really is beyond the pale. And if Councillor Carpenter isn't prepared to apologise or just simply to withdraw those few comments that he made which were so offensive to the majority of other members in this chamber, uh, then he should do. But if he doesn't, then the Council should adjourn as a protest at his conduct here this evening. Do I have a seconder? Um, I'm willing to second it, Madam Mayor. If I may say a few words as well. I, no, no, oh, right. no, no, no. I just like understanding orders. Understanding orders, you cannot say it. Just second it. Thank you, Councillor Locker. Councillor Ellis, do you wish to speak? Councillor Ellis, do you wish to speak? He's allowed yeah. to. Understand. You're allowed to understanding orders because this was, came under your um, debate. <laughs> we want to know what you think. M Madam Mayor, is it okay if I seek advice from the Chief Executive? Perhaps it, just you. you don't have to. Councillor Carpenter, would you like to withdraw those remarks? They were an observation of fact, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, point of explanation as a primary school teacher who teaches children facts and opinion on a regular basis, if I may, Madam Mayor. The motion now before the Council is that the Council do now adjourn for 30 seconds as a protest against Councillor Carpenter. Uh, uh, can I um, propose an amendment um, that the Council no, you no, you withdraws can't. for a minute and a half? Council calls and Time has passed, Councillor Ellis. Point of order, please. What sort of order is it, please? In regards to the vote we're just about to take, I do not believe that the Councillor stipulated any length of time in his adjournment motion. 30 seconds. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the motion, that's it. Those in favour of the motion? Those against? Thirty-nine in favour and twelve against. Therefore, the council is adjourned for thirty seconds.
Charles, please resume. Councillor Setters, please. Thank you. May I make a point of personal explanation since I was the subject of this uh, particular episode in the last few minutes whilst uh, I was out of the chamber. Can I just say that the role of being leader of the council does not simply apply to being at the council meeting for the duration because the role is about doing all sorts of other things. And if Councillor Carpenter is interested in what I was doing, can I just tell him that I was engaged in conversations with colleagues in this of this, mem this council, talking about matters relating to this council, about where we are going to take the council forward, rather than standing outside not taking an interest in housing. The other issue is that under my leadership, I want my cabinet members to take responsibility for their portfolio. Councillor Ellis, in whom I have enormous confidence, is quite capable of leading on the housing uh, agenda, as are other interested members of this council leading on the housing agenda. The idea that the leader of the council has to sit here listening to a debate whilst he has confidence in his colleagues to con continue that debate and not discharge other responsibilities outside the council is kind of bizarre and banal.